was so powerful. This is the moment that changed my belief system because there in front of me on the screen were pictures of where I just was. Hi, I'm Veronica and welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. Have you ever wondered about reincarnation? If so, then stick around because today that's what we're going to talk about. Hi, and welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. I'm Veronica, and if you haven't been here before, welcome. It's my desire to help people live their best lives. So on this channel, we talk about intentional living and spirituality and all of the things, mind, body, spirit, that go into helping you create the life of your dreams. If this is something that interests you, please take a minute to hit the subscribe button down below. Have you ever had questions about reincarnation? Have you ever wondered if it's even true? Were you like me and you grew up being taught that it wasn't real and you never really believed in it anyways? Today I'm going to share with you what happened to me to convince me that reincarnation is real. This is my reincarnation story. First, let me start with a little background about myself so that, you know, kind of set the stage. I was raised in a very strict, fundamental Baptist home. Any talk of reincarnation, it just didn't exist. And if it did come up, it would be poo-pooed away immediately as false doctrine, being of the devil, etc. So needless to say, I was raised to not believe in reincarnation at all. So fast forward to 2015, when I began this spiritual awakening journey, when I was talking to my guides, I often like to ask them questions such as, if this was the one and only time you ever got to talk to me, what would you say? And they would give me their little bit of advice. So one time I said, tell me one thing that I was taught growing up that isn't true. And they responded that reincarnation isn't real. And I had never really thought about it. I hadn't thought much of it. I just knew that I was taught that it wasn't real and I just never believed it. So I didn't give it a second thought. But in this moment when they said that, I responded, what? <laughs> Are you meaning to tell me that reincarnation is real? And they're like, absolutely. And I said, I've lived before. And my pendulum spelled out, LOL, if you only knew how many times you'd lived before, many times. So that piqued my curiosity, and I wanted to know what they were talking about. So I'm like, well, okay then, if I've lived before, then who the heck was I? And he said, you've been many people. And I said, well, give me some details. Is there anything I can look up and verify? And he said, start paying attention to your dreams. We're going to give you some dreams that will show you many things, and you'll see. Because if you haven't seen my other video on ways to communicate with your spirit guides, one of the ways that they communicate with you is through your dreams because your guides are in charge of your dreams. If you're interested in watching that video, I will link it below. So to preface this, you need a little background about me. I have always been borderline obsessed with the big band era like the 20s through the 40s. I mean, that is my time. I feel like that is the most special period of time. I love it. I love everything about it. I've always worn my hair. This is actually long for me. Typically, I have my hair in rather a short angled bob. Big band music is some of my favorite music. And I, I'm i just kind of obsessed. So shortly thereafter, I had this dream. And it didn't feel like a dream. It felt more like a memory or like it was just real. In this dream, I didn't know where I was. I had never seen this place before, but it was beautiful. And it kind of reminded me of a hotel, perhaps. It had black and white marble floors. It had wooden paneling on the walls. This building was beautiful and fancy. It was quite posh. We walked down this hallway and up ahead, there was a gentleman that he looked like a butler. He was in full tails, white gloves, and he just kind of bowed, and he was like, this way, ladies. I couldn't see myself, but I could see down and see what I was wearing. And on my feet, I was wearing olive green 
colored Mary Jane pumps. Kind of a style that would be popular in the 20s, and I was wearing a long coat. I looked to my left. I was with a group of ladies, and the lady to my left was looking at me and smiling at me. She was very pretty, and she was wearing a cloche hat and a fur-collared coat. And it was very clear to me that this was set in the 1920s. And apparently we were ladies who lunched. <laughs> and behind this gentleman, I could see, I had no idea what I was seeing, but I could see what looked like a gazebo with lattice work, arched lattice work. It looked like a round gazebo. And I was seeing this through some windows. So we were in the hallway. I could see through some windows. Inside this other room, there was what looked like a latticed gazebo. And then I woke up. So after I woke up, I went and got my pendulum. I signed on to talk to my spirit guide. And I, I mean, I was so enamored with this dream. It was so fancy and it was so lovely and I was so happy and it was just a great dream. So I signed on to talk to my spirit guide and I'm like, what was that? <laughs> and he said, that was you tromping through the Savoy. And I didn't know what that meant. I said, well, what is the Savoy? And he said, it's a hotel in London. Google it. So I did. I signed on to Google immediately and Googled the London Savoy and up popped these pictures and I was speechless. This almost makes me want to cry because it was so powerful. This is the moment that changed my belief system because there in front of me on the screen were pictures of where I just was. And I've never been to London and yet I had just been to the Savoy in London in my dreams because there was the exact place. I think the wallpaper was different, but everything else was the same. And in their dining room was a gazebo made of lattice work that you could see from outside of the dining room through these windows. And I'm like, oh my God, that's where I just was. I was there. I was a woman who went to lunch at the Savoy in the 1920s. That was powerful and it was really special. So I became a believer in that moment, but like a skeptical believer, I was then thirsty for more information. I wanted more info. Before this dream ever happened, when he had first told me reincarnation was real, of course I was grilling him like, oh, well then when was my last lifetime and blah, blah, blah. And he had told me that my last lifetime was from 1895 through, I think it was 1969, and that I had lived in London. So then fast forward, like, several days or a week when he gave me this dream, and I saw that I was in London. I was at the Savoy. It didn't occur to me at that time to ask him who I was. I just thought that that was really cool. So then what proceeded to happen over the next year, I would say, is that I started having a series of dreams about this woman. I probably had like five or six of them. One dream, I was flitting all about town. I was at parties and openings in the theater, and um, I was very social. I was very popular, very social, and my intention is not to sound arrogant or anything, but in the dream, it was my reality that I just knew that I was very beautiful and that people liked me, and the men were always after me, and I was just very popular. I had another dream. I was her in this dream, and I could hear my voice. I heard her talking. And it was a mixture of an English accent and something else, but I wasn't sure what at that time. I learned later that it was a mixture of Australian with like a British twist on it. I had another dream where I was her, and I want to say I was at like a garden party. I was out back of a lovely home, 
and flowers blooming, green grass, and we were waiting to go into this little get together. And I was being very flirty with this very handsome man that was standing in front of me. And he was wearing, I don't know the proper term for it, you know, a morning suit or he was dressed well. And I was leaning back against a fence and I was just kind of being flirty. And then I had this brief moment in this dream where I was outside of the body looking at her. And I could see her face. She was very beautiful. She was lovely. And I could see her. I now knew what she looked like. And I could see what she was wearing. And she was wearing this beautiful um, chiffon floral dress with some ruffles on it. She just looked lovely. One day... I had asked my guide, is this someone that I can figure out who she is? And he's like, of course. I can't believe it took you so long to ask because <laughs> I'm normally super curious. And I was like, really? And he goes, Google it. I'm like, so if I Google her, I'm going to find her. He's like, yes, you have enough clues. Go find her. Do your research. So I won't go into details about who she is because she actually has children that are still alive. She has a child that is still alive. She has grandchildren. I just think it might be weird to put it out there. But even with the clues I just gave, you could figure out who I'm talking about if you wanted to badly enough. So I went to Google, and I just typed in, like, 1920s London socialites, and up popped all of these socialites. They were talking about the Bright Young Things, which was their version of, like, the Brat Pack. They were the it crowd. And all of them and all of their friends. Keep in mind, I knew the dates that I was told that I lived. And I had just seen her face. And so I was scrolling through all of these. And they were like, no, 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 no. And just as I was ready to give up, boom, there she was. I was looking at her face, and I looked, and it said her years that she lived were 1895 to 1969, and I was just speechless. I was like, oh, my God. That was me. I was her. And she was Australian but lived in England, hence the accent I heard. And a book had just been written about her, actually, a biography. So I immediately went to Amazon and ordered the book. And it was amazing that, you know, learning about her and her personality, that was me. That's me and my personality. Her likes, her dislikes, her patterns, the things she's still working on in life, her relationships with men, etc., me. We're still working on that stuff. <laughs> it carries from life to life. And it talked about all of her likes and her preferences and her love for interior decorating and decor and etc. I mean, it's just uncanny. It's all me. It's all her and it's all me. So that's how my guides convinced me the reincarnation was real and that was amazing that was a very amazing experience and I think they were kind of brilliant in the way that they did it because they know me and they knew the best way to convince me what convinced me they did and I am a, such a believer now if you've had any dreams or uh, memories show up or deja vu's or anything like that let me know. I'm curious to hear about this stuff. We're all learning together, and I'm curious to know what your experience was. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you've experienced and what your thoughts are on this. And if you're curious to learn more, talk to your guides about it. Set your intention out there that you would like to learn more about your past lives, and then pay attention to what you get. I'll talk to you soon. Until then.